friends, it's time for another showdown, and this time it's between the round brush and my beloved dagger brush. Okay, a round brush with a lovely fine point is a classic. It's reliable, familiar. It's the brush that most of you start this journey with, and it's the brush that you look to again and again. Now, the dagger brush is cool looking, a bit intimidating at first. It feels curiously awkward in hand, especially when you first start using it, but then it surprises you. Okay, 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 I won't make you wait. Here's a preview of my thoughts before we dive in. A good round brush is the old reliable, but in most cases, it will require more strokes to create the same shapes compared to a really good dagger brush. So stick around as these babies go head to head five different times, and then I'll let you, my lovely, creatively brilliant community, decide the winner. Today, friends, I am using my Etcher sketchbook. This is the mixed media, 100% cotton paper. I'm really loving this sketchbook. I've got a video coming soon because I haven't always been a sketchbook gal, but that might be changing. Anywho, getting back on track, Friends, I'm going to do a full spread here and split this very casually into four sections because we're going to do four different showdowns here before we get to the final head to head. So just taking a pencil and creating a line right across the middle and the spine is my other imaginary line to create the four quadrants. All right, we're gonna start with leaves, friends, and in each of these showdowns, I'm going to use the round brush first. Now, of course, I'd love if some of you were painting along with me, and if you are, we're gonna be using my classic press, drag, and lift technique, regardless of which brush is in hand. Starting at the very top, press with about a half inch drag and then slowly lift with this round brush to get that really beautiful fine point at the end. Notice there on the left, that third one down on the left, I didn't lift as slowly. I lifted quicker and I got a blunt end. Change up the angle so you can really get a feel for this brush. Curve your hand as you're working. And of course, a little vein down the middle so you can test out how beautifully of a thin mark this brush can make. Friends, a good round brush, in my humble opinion, should have the most glorious fine point. If it doesn't, you're gonna struggle to get those thin lines. Now with the dagger, same thing, press, drag, and lift, but you're gonna notice right away, you can more easily get a really beautiful variety of shapes with this dagger because you've got that gorgeous, wider curved edge that is typically the edge you're gonna use. It's going to be facing down on the page most often when you're painting, but it gives you the most incredible silhouettes with the flick of a wrist. And of course, that fine, fine point that you still have on the dagger is gonna give you those thin, thin lines. Moving on to petals. All right, I'm just gonna say it, you know my dagger bias. I have a dagger brush bias, so I'm just gonna say right now, friends, this is where the dagger brush really shines. Petals, OMG petals, my friends. You can create this flower so quickly with the dagger, but let's start with the round. It makes beautiful shapes, but you usually have to do two or three strokes to get the same shape. And this is still a press, wiggle, drag, lift. It's all about the press, drag, and lift, and a little bit of wiggle in between, and depending on how long you drag or how quickly you lift, that's going to change the shape of your petal. All right, there we go. We have our basic flower shape and I'm just adjusting at the center here, fussing and discussing a little bit, coming up with the dagger, creating the same petals. You can see, look at that, look how quickly, and friends, don't get me wrong, it's not like we're cutting time in half here, I get it, but there's just a certain ease that the dagger brush gives you once you've kind of gotten the vibe and got a feel for how it holds in the hand. It creates some of the most lovely personality filled brush strokes that I've ever created in my life, quite honestly. But that's not to say I don't love a good round. 
Sometimes I love the simplicity of good quality classic round brush in my hands. All right, community, friends, I want to hear from you. You've seen the leaves, you've seen the petals. What are you thinking so far? Head to comments and let me know which brush do you kind of feel more drawn to. If you've tried a dagger brush and you have some frustrations, get into comments and let's talk about it. All right, moving on to a landscape. So the thing about landscapes is I tend to use the side of my brushes more. And so I'm heading into creating this little distant mountainous silhouette in the background and then very quickly going in with some green and adding a kind of a nice just open up perspective in the foreground. It could be a road, it could be a whatever. The point here is to just create some classic landscape silhouettes to see how these brushes interact in each scenario. I actually really enjoy a round brush in my landscape, so I always have one on hand when I know I'm gonna be painting on plein air. And here we go, especially in the clouds, love it, love it so much. But here comes the dagger, friends. And let me tell you what, the dagger, you're gonna see the quickness factor really come into play with the dagger in the landscapes. And I think that's really the thing for me about a dagger is that you can get quick and beautiful shapes effortlessly once you've gotten used to holding the brush and understanding the different ways that it can hit the page. I guess that's all I'll say. Now friends, I do have a dagger drill video. I'm gonna link to it below so you can check it out because if you're more curious about the dagger at this point, you're gonna wanna watch that video soon. All right, moving into the landscape with the dagger and already look at that just with a little change in pressure. And that's another good point too, friends. The dagger brush to me feels like it's much more sensitive to changing pressure, which means you're going to get more interesting variety of strokes when you press harder or lift up or do a combination of both in one stroke. Love it. All right, friends, if you feel like you're getting something out of this video at this point, which I hope you are, at least maybe a chuckle at my hysterical and quirky narration, give this video a boop, that's a like, and it just helps my channel and it lets people know that they should head on over and watch this video too. And you know what else, friends, while we're at it, I wanna try something new. Many of you have followed me over on Instagram, and if you're painting along with me today, I would love for you to post your work, tag me, and that way we can have a conversation there too, because clearly, you know I love to talk. All right, last but not least is our lemon. And I gotta admit, I liked my lemon with the round brush more than my dagger lemon. So watch this one unfold. I just love the ease and simplicity. The lemon is a more simple shape. Maybe that's it. Maybe that's why the round brush worked a little better. I don't know. You tell me what your experience is. Friends, it's time to head into comments again and let me know. I want to know your experience. What round brushes have you used and you've loved the most? And if you've tried daggers, let me know which brands you've tried and you've loved the most. Now, friends, something to point out, not all dagger brushes, honestly, not all brushes are created equal. I come from a perspective of synthetics that have more spring and bounce and really snap back into shape. I love a shorter bristle dagger, especially because the longer daggers that are more like a sword brush, they're very hard to control. And so the combination of synthetic bouncy springy bristles with a shorter dagger bristle gives you a ton of control, holds a lot of water. You can make those gorgeous shapes all the while still feeling very much in control of your brush. All right, here we are with the dagger and the lemon, and I think this is just user error. I just got this shape all wrong, but I think it's really a toss up with the lemon and between these two brushes. I just think it's a toss up, and that's just me trying to cover up for my, my poor form on this second lemon, yeah. <laughs> Oh my goodness. All right, here is the final head to head. We're gonna do a full floral composition, one on each page of my sketchbook here, friends, starting with the round, of course. You know, I commented a little bit about the quality of the dagger and not all daggers are created equal, but the same goes for a round brush. 
Earlier on in the video, I showed you a variety of round brushes that I have in my collection that I randomly picked up. And you probably noticed that some of them came to a really nice point and some of them were a little more blunt. And I gotta be honest, I'm a little bit more of a keep it simple kind of gal, so I don't wanna have all the brushes in the world, even though I feel like I do have all the brushes in the world, but you know what I mean. So for me, the point on a round brush is super, super important. That's why I like this particular round brush that I've been using lately, because it comes to that nice point. But the same thing goes for that synthetic bristle. It has a great bounce and it just springs back into shape. So really important for me and the way I paint. All right, friends, I'm gonna speed through this one a little bit so we can compare the same to the dagger brush. All right, friends, how did that feel? Are you liking this so far? Do you kind of like this showdown thing? Let me know in comments. And if you haven't watched the watercolor brand showdown video, I'm gonna link to that down below too. But let me know if I should do more of these head to head showdown videos. Okay, we're starting the same painting now. I'm gonna do my best to replicate the first one, but you know, it is upside down right now. So it's a little hard, <laughs> I'm kidding. But friends, you know, that I am obsessed with the dagger. And I gotta be honest, I just like my paintings, especially my floral paintings better with a dagger. So here we go. You be the judge. So here are my thoughts, friends. A good quality round brush is definitely something you should have in your collection, for sure. And also a dagger, I'd love for you to give one a try. Doesn't have to be mine, but a dagger similar to mine that has a springy touch and bounce and is synthetic, so you have all that good control when you're using it, is a wonderful brush to add to your collection. Recently, Jenna Rainey did a really fun video where she used a filbert brush and asked, is this brush cheating? And I loved it because I kind of feel the same way about the dagger. And this, my friends, I believe is my final thought. It's not cheating because a particular brush makes your work feel more joyful. And that's the beauty of a dagger brush for me. It makes the act of painting in most cases feel a lot more lighthearted and therefore a lot more joyful. I don't feel like I'm struggling to make shapes as much as I am with other brushes. And that, my friends, is why for me, the dagger will always win. All right, it's your turn. Final thoughts, head into comments, hash it out. I cannot wait to hear your thoughts. Now, I'm guessing that you clicked onto this video because you're possibly newer to this watercolor thing. So if that's the case, you really need to watch this next video because I'm going to take you through all of the basic beginner watercolor techniques that you're going to need to flourish. You don't wanna miss it. Happy painting, friends.